Hello and welcome to the Cinema Sins, Cinema Wins, Cinema C Cinema Fap. Fapping all about Doctor Strange, Multiverse Madness. Oh, beautiful. Very true. Here we are. How exciting. It was a uh, it was a close fight. You know, people thought that anyone could win it and then and then it ended just it neck a, and neck. 100%. It was a real nail biter. Mhm. Mm Who would have thought it would have ended that Who'd way? Thunk. So it did. Who would have thunk? That's, that's, that's part one of a potential trilogy of discovering what will happen on the, the fight between them both, because, you know, they just, they just work so well when pitted against each other. You just gotta find the right movies. Um, we're gonna check out some messages that we were sent. Yeah. Here and there. All right, so the first one is, hey guys, you're gonna talk about the best video game ever made. Well, which uh, We definitely will, 100%. Well, we did, uh, Gollum, but that mm. was, you know. A lot of people don't so, like Gollum, surprisingly. That strikes me as odd. I think that's a little... Mm. <clears throat> a little bit unfair. A little suspicious. Not mm. sure why they would not like Gollum. Yeah. Uh, please watch Gorilla Grodd versus Barack Obama. Grodd says, make America Grodd again. Uh, what, mm. is, what does that mean? Was America being... When was America Grodd? I don't know. That was that's some proper Grodd posting, though. Some inspection on that claim, but all right. Why are you doing this right after Disney is trying to fix the damage Waldron did to the multiverse? Check out the new Spider-Man movie out now. Because uh, they ignored the reference, the, the 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 label being wrong. They called it the correct one. Is that what is that what we mean? Kind of funny, yeah. I mean that was just a fucking mistake in the multiverse madness movie, and all you have to do is just ignore it. Yep. I asked my That's mother simple. on. Mother's Day to watch Arcane. She's loving the series so far and just got finished up watching episode three, best episode of the show. Mm, That's a fair maybe, thing to say. I'd say maybe. Uh, uh, glad to hear she's enjoying it. Very glad. Good. <clears throat> to present, oh, to all, present during this reading. If you were trapped in a room for an hour and was forced to play the platforming of Atomic Heart or Lord of Ring Golem, which would you play? Surely Atomic Heart, right? Are they gonna, but it is the implication that you play Gollum or you play Atomic Heart's platforming for as long as it would have taken to complete Gollum? I don't know. I have no idea. That case. Information. Oh, I don't know. Because <clears throat> I, I, I don't know exactly what that looks like. Uh, Atomic Heart's platforming is goompy, but if you kept getting new puzzles to solve and stuff, and new platforms to jump, like I could see that being more entertaining than Gollum. So... I think I need more context, but uh, depending on the result, it could be either of them. Because um, I'm assuming it would be like Portal, you just keep completing until your time's up. I'd probably go with Atomic Heart. Um, why are you talking about N O M O M when Gollum Spider is out? True. Oh, you Gollum got is your, almost out. You got your Gollum That's... fap. It came. And I'll say, that meme's, that meme's been sticking around for a while. Gollum Spider? No, the uh, such and such is almost out. Why are you talking about X? Y is almost out. It is. It's that's a that's an old one too. That's kind of yeah. That's that's a bit of an oldie, a golden oldie. You never know what you guys will find to be the the ones to stay. <clears throat> As just finished his golem playthrough, that game. Why does it exist? Well, you know, could be could be all kinds of devious things happening behind the scenes. For all you golem lovers out there. Mm-hmm. Hello, Mingla, Froggy, Unt Rag. Hello. Oh, Unt Rang, it says, but... Yeah. Ooh, Rang. Uh, what do you think is the main cause of the MCU's rapid decline in quality? People not caring about the writing and a terrible production... Um, Schedules? I guess, like, chaos, yeah. Rushing everything is probably really at the core of it all. Uh... But yeah, of course, we would say it's the, the awful, awful writing. But if someone was to say, but why is it awful, awful writing? So, uh, oh, well, we have a whole podcast devoted to that. We've seen a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and it just seems like a lot of it now has got a formula that is horrific for creating um, stories. A lot of the movies created before the story is. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I would say. I'd put a lot of the blame on the production. The, the way yep. that they make films, I don't see how you could consistently tell good stories while making films that way. I just, I don't, I don't see how you could do it reliably. Yep. 
Uh, you guys should do an EFAP movies on the Brothers Bloom. It's Ryan Johnson's least known, but arguably most incoherent film. For real? You sure? Really? I feel like the most incoherent. It's probably going to go Looper to Glass Onion. Looper is pretty crazy. You know? <laughs> yeah, Gloss Onion is nuts. Mm -hmm. As just finished Gollum, and I was there for the plane crash. What an absolutely trash game. Overall, it was impressive how bad the game was. Just insane. The graphics alone were slightly above NES. It was, it was pretty bad. It was, it, was, it was pretty bad. He survived, which is the important part. Um, think Spider-Man smashed all those crackers when he tried def delivering those pizzas? Ah, reference. One huh. that may fly over people's heads, but uh, yeah, probably. What, the, the... you think that, one, you, that reference will fly over people's heads, you reckon? For sure. It was so quick, and so many EFAP fans, you know? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, crackers and Spider-Man? I don't, I don't, is that something to do with the new movie? And be like, no. Yeah, but then, then you say, look, just think about pizza time, okay? And then maybe that or The crackers on the top will... pizza probably got to go a bit crushed, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rags, Mola, and Fringy. Hello. Hello. Hey. Fringy, how long do you how often do you play Knifey Spoonie? Uh I haven't played it for a while, actually. Um, yeah. So I'm a bit out of the loop on the current happenings mm. with uh, the old Knifey Spoonie. I haven't got the new DLC. No, I don't. <clears throat> Hello, Rags. Don't let the big midgets hey. win. Never. You can never let the big midgets win. They're bullies. Uh, uh, celebrate the... F oh, that's that's neat. Uh, that was their first Super Shot, the Knife Spoonie one, apparently. Oh, wow. Hey, thanks very much to you. Yeah. Uh, I randomly decided to try Trust... Sorry, to... Just to try... To Trust, Try, and Watch TLJ. Okay. Uh, got 40 minutes in before giving up. Fuck that movie. Also, hi, meme. He would have said hi back. And yeah, well, you know. I wonder what happens at around the 40 minute mark that got him. Is that Leia getting booed out? Bail. Could be is it. it Leia or is it something that Luke says? Or <laughs> like, I wonder what it, I wonder what it was. I'd, I would kind of be curious to know what the tipping point for him was. Maybe the 40 minute Maybe, mark is Luke this, saying I just want to die. Curious. That could be it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh... Season 4 is a mixed bag, but some of my favorite scenes are in there. Some of the characters floomp a bit, but I like how oddly anticlimactic the whole thing is. Are we talking about su uh, Succession, yeah? I think so. Um, there's some good scenes in it. I'm happy to say, yeah. <laughs> Though some of the characters floomp a bit is uh, an understatement. It's an I think. understatement. Everyone becomes a strange, bizarro, alien, shapeshifter, skinwalker of what he previously One of the things I to be. forgot to mention when we were talking about it, so we can sort of do it here, is um, Roman going to check out the uh, the movie, or the news side of things, movie side of things, whatever, but the, the person in charge, who's been in charge, like, reliably, um, he says, our work is getting a little too biased in one direction, and that's not good. Makes us look bad, we need to work on that. And then Roman fires her. Yep, that's right before he fires Jerry. Well, so I was going to say, he, like, is joking, quote-unquote, but he just fires her and leaves the room. He's obviously, like, she takes it seriously. And so then Jerry is like, what the fuck did you do? Why did you fire her? That was stupid. And then he says, um, I didn't fire her, it was a joke. And she's like, oh, well, she's, like, suing us or something. She's she's planning, she's talking to people and she's planning everything. It's like, yep, that was a really stupid thing for Roman to do. And then I said, when we were watching it, as a joke, that the show's gotten so bad that Roman might just fire Jerry. Like, who knows? And then uh, Jerry calls him out so much that he fires Jerry. Um, this was one of the big indicators that this was the beginning of the end of <clears> the show. Yeah, we knew the show was we dead. Were, we were already going, uh, but, uh, boy, that point, we were just like, like, the show makes me angry. It, the show, like, legitimately makes me upset, because I'm wondering what the hell happened to all these people. you cared about those characters. You don't want to see Roman yeah. being a complete moron. And like I said, it's a, anyone who hasn't seen the show can understand. You have someone who's in charge of a huge sector. They tell you something very reasonable. They haven't even suggested necessarily anything in any direction. They're just trying to tell you what the problem is. But even if, right, they're the person you'd want to go to. They're the ones that would probably know because they're the head of it. And then you fire them for it. It's like, okay. And then someone else who's higher up tells you that was a really dumb thing that you did. And then you fire them. This person, by the way, has been working for them for decades has been the decades. most reliable, and she's personally helped Roman more than anyone. 
Yeah, they had a particular connection that really could have amounted to something interesting. Jerry was a, a very valuable asset to that company, and she seemed to be really very much on the straight and narrow in terms of mm -hmm. being, you know, pro, you know, Royco Waystar um, as an entity. Very much a, a savvy businesswoman, and the fact that he got rid of her and just like that, it was so fucking frustrating. Is it like the penultimate episode we find out that she's suing him for like a hundred thousand, or she wants a hundred million, I think it is? Basically, she wanted to hold, yeah, when they were at the bar at the party. And, and the thing uh, is, uh, she's got him almost literally by the balls. Uh, she's got photos of his balls and his dick, because he sent them to her over and over again, and she's going to use that as sexual harassment to, you know, destroy him if he doesn't concede. And we never see the end of that, because the show ends before it. Well, you see, it's one of the many plot threads that was really interesting and set up that, that just got dropped. Yeah, because we could actually buy that he did do send those pictures, but um, we did not buy that he would have fired her. Never would have bought that. So, yeah, you know, just another example of a character doing insane things, plot, insane plots happening, and then we have all this drama, and then it doesn't go anywhere. It's like, okay. Well, yeah, it does. It's, it's going somewhere, but then it doesn't have time to go anywhere else. So, um, a while back, you guys were debating about games with good combat. I believe during a Philosophers Two episode. I don't think I've heard you guys talk about the Arkham series. I think that has the best combat. Well, like in general, in all video games, because I disagree. There's no way, right? No, I. No, I, 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 I would even go as far as they have like a middle yeah. point. The Arkham games sit in the middle. Yeah, it's kind of. Like, I remember, it, it's kind of in that, like, Assassin's Creed 2 slash Revelations kind of combat, mm. um, where it's fine, it's and fun. it's engaging, but, but I think that there's so the many options depth. to flesh it out. Well, it just doesn't have the mechanical depth of a lot of other action games. Um, I don't, it's really accessible. I remember in Assassin's Creed 2, I don't know if this was in later games, maybe it was, it's been years and years since i played these games. Um, one of the things that was neat is that in Assassin's Creed 2, at least, if you had your hidden blades as weapons and you were in a fight with them, it was a really high-risk, high-reward weapon where you basically couldn't block anything that the enemy did unless you did like a... It had a you had a very small window to counter the enemy attacks. It was much more difficult. But if you managed to do it, it was an instant kill, even against like the big, heavy armor guys. So if you were really good at timing, you could use the hidden blade to get an insta kill on the big enemies. Um, though, of course, if your timing was off, you'd take a lot of damage from their attacks because you couldn't like parry like the sword or knife or anything like that. And it was really neat to sort of see these weapon differences. Um, and there was a there was a neat style to them. But that kind of combat, I guess, type. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to kind of work within that framework. And I think games just need to do it. Please add more complexity. It, it can go a long way. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, EFAB. Hi, Rex. Hey. Hello. Thanks for the awesome content, especially while my doggo is not doing so great. By the way, would you ever consider doing an EFAB movies on Tremors? It's not... Uh, if not, that's fine, but I think that could be fun. Thanks again. Um, Maybe. Yeah, I think that could work, because Tremors is a film with plenty to sort of talk about and react to while being pretty awesome, so... I'd be on board with that. I would. I need to see it. I've. Uh, I think I saw it many, 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 many years ago, but I remember virtually nothing about it. So I need to see that movie. Hmm. And hopefully your uh, dog's health improves. Yeah, absolutely. Remember when Cinema Wins ended his joke of it with a nonsensical rant on mental illness in movies? Fantasy for your inner sh oh shadow. Fantasy for your inner shadow has God tier joke a video on that. I don't remember that. That's weird. I remember us covering this video, but I really don't remember a rant about mental illness, but to be fair. There's a lot of been, stuff we probably don't remember. We've been doing a lot of EFAP happen. Yeah. <laughs> now time. Um, hello, all my golem words. Off. I hate to have to tell you this, but Jay won the argument. Kick Jay. Madness. Madness. Uh, da, da, da. I really enjoyed your EFAP movies for Mulan and 101 Dalmatians. Have you considered doing one for the Little Mermaid slash future Disney remakes? We have indeed considered uh, That it. has been considered, yes. There's a good chance eventually we will set up to do the lot. The feckin' lot of them. Going, I there's guess we'd have to draw a line. Remakes, though, you know, at a like, start, would the start be Cinderella? 
What would it be? Uh, yeah, Cinderella's probably because it was that Alice in Wonderland one that Tim Burton did, but that feels like it's not the same as yeah. own thing. That's what I mean about Cinderella was line. like the, the re, or Maleficent, maybe. That was kind of yeah, like maybe that, hmm. that too, like that. because it's Cruella, right? So probably Maleficent is like the beginning of that. Uh, and and Era. I I guess the question is, do we include like the Pinocchio one that got released on Disney Plus or yeah, yeah. Lady and the Tramp? Yeah, definitely. Uh, those so two are going. That's going to be like yeah, fifteen good. movies then. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> we better get started. Mm hmm. Uh, bu 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 bu. SCP of the day is SCP 4255, time traveling Santa Claus. SCP 4255. Let's see, is yeah. it rated? It's rated so so. In, uh, in appearance, it's a. Uh, okay, all right. What does he do? Um, I'd have to read the big old article and get back to you on that. They don't have like a powers or anything? Sort of um, it's a humanoid points. male with aged appearance, approximately death done height, that, that weight appears to be 60, 70s. Um, Santa Claus, it looks like it's Santa Claus. Um, along with the red and gold ornate, ornate sleigh that this character is known to be present in, designated. Da, 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 da. It is capable of flight via unknown means and is able to travel at speeds of approximately 100 kilometers an hour um, with Santa Claus remaining inside uh, the sled during flight, even when scientifically impossible. Uh, it is drawn by eight cervid animals resembling uh, Rangifer tarandus. I assume a reindeer. Although infrared scans show that these do not possess any heat signatures, it's unknown if they're living organisms. It's just uh, Santa. Yeah, I guess this is just like the joke is that it's Santa. That's kind of funny. Um, we'll on to, it will land on the roof of or near a household of individuals that celebrate the holiday Christmas, regardless of religious background, and will use its temporal abilities to enter the household. It will produce a multitude of wrapped gifts and toys, the number of gifts given varying from child to child. Um, mm. It is also of note that uh, SCP-4255 has a significant understanding of the likes and dislikes of each child on Earth with presents given having an 82.56% accuracy rate compared to what the child would like to have received for a gift at the time. All, all gifts are uh, have been non-anomalous. Okay. I'm sure there's all sorts of, you know, neat things. It, it goes on for a bit, but this, I guess there's little neat things here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fun little, like, oh, yeah, that Santa is Claus. Fun. Yeah. If we found Santa Claus and scientifically investigated Santa Claus, how would the, you know, SCP Foundation... You know, deal with that and classify it. It's, it's fine. Um, Hello, gents. What's you guys' opinion on the game Valheim? It's kind of like Ark, but I think the structural integrity aspect is super neat. Hi, Rags. Um, hey, I played it a bit. It's fine. Maybe I just didn't get quite into it, but it seems all right. I have no familiarity with Ark. It's called Ark Survival Evolved, and oh wait, Valheim either. So <laughs> yeah, I can't help on either of those. Yeah, I don't really know what those games are about. I've heard of them, but really not familiar with what types of games they are. Shocking, isn't it? Between these two sparky blokes, who do you prefer the design-wise? We got Bright Man sparky and Plug Man. I'll do Plug Man. Let me get that. Plug Man. Oh my goodness. Uh, you getting yeah, the correct get result? Good. Yes, I'm getting the correct result of Plug Man. What do you mean? Um, you know, because it's just Google, right? You can have so many different results. I, I suppose so, yeah. I think that I got the correct one, though. So I got Bright so, Man. You, you, uh, you do Bright Man, and I'll post Plug Man. I got him. Here we are. There is Bright Man. And this is Plug Man. Um, um, <laughs> I, think I think Plug Man's the easy winner for me. I think so, too. That's just, Bright it's Man just is, funny. Yeah. He's is pretty funny. He yeah, yeah, that's pretty much why. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, he's more pluggy than bright. Brighty is, I guess. He's very pluggy. Um, uh, the bright man is just like a red guy, and then there, I guess there's also a light up top. I guess that's a light bulb. Yeah. Um, I feel like we could have done more with that concept. Pluggies, I think, a li leaning a little bit further into the plug kind I think of it's idea. The, uh, the plug shoulder. Yeah, things it's so head. funny. <laughs> it's what clinches it for him, you know. I even try to imagine how he could use that. It's like it's probably not for using. It's just 
well, no, aesthetic. because if he used it, it would, like, crush his head. Yeah. If he plunged himself into a wall. The important thing is, Maybe he's feeling confident. Oh. Yeah, he's yeah, he seems like he's having a good time. Well, oh, good one. Uh... Do, do... Ew, Star Wars character, Blando Cumrisian. I'm just an average guy and I sure do like cum. Hmm. I guess he, yeah, he's Blando. Understandable. So, yeah. Understandable. Not a fan favorite, but definitely one that's tolerated. It's like, good old Blando. Not a fan favorite, but he's a sleeper hit in some yeah. circles. They really love, uh, they love, they love Cumrisian. In Tears of the Kingdom, whenever Yonobo yells, I can do it, it sounds more like he's saying, Why'd you do it? Bring can you confirm? Wait, what character? Yonobo. Yonobo? Yonobo? Oh, you know. yeah, oh. yeah, I, so, I, yeah, I can't confirm or deny, I can't remember what that sound bite sounds like. Oh well. We'll, we'll trust you, Super Chatter. Uh, you guys have no idea the amount of bizarre stuff that the real-life Bill Gates has done that nobody remembers. Frozen blood is nothing. It's not, no, <laughs> blood bricks is not something uh, that I can't imagine a character doing. It's fucking insane. But the Lucas at that point, up to that point, hadn't been given anything close to that kind of characterization. I mean, and... it's, it's just worth emphasizing in the show is that a lot of the conversations are about leverage. It's about characters essentially finding opportunities to one up other people to advance their position. He just surrenders leverage, and he, he doesn't just surrenders it. He surrenders it to Shiv Roy. That is one of the worst yeah. people you can give that to when we've got so much going on right now. Uh, just so happens to work out because they decide to work together, essentially. Yeah, which creates the finale's big decision. It all originates well, in Shiv just being like, hey, season. hey, Lucas, and he's like, hey. Yeah. Yeah, it's pathetic. Um, the blood break thing is insane, but that's not the actual crux of our criticism. Uh, um, uh, it's a step on the journey. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a piece of information <laughs> that gets that's you there. Yeah. It's a plot thing that just sort of, it just like manifests itself so that we can have a weird well, yeah, thing happen. I think we talked about it, but it was one of the biggest problems with season four is that whereas in like season one or two, you would have plot threads that were established episodes ahead of when they would get paid off. And even then they could keep continuing. Mm -hmm. Season four would just sort of, they just appear suddenly out of nowhere and create the drama for that episode. Very much a sense of this is happening now. It's like, oh. And then that happens, and then that happens rather than. When it's it just gets to the point where. Like, when therefore, when something principle. foundationless and insane happens, we were all just like, oh, and that's going to make that happen. Right, okay, yeah. That's why they're giving us it's, this now. It's, Which sucks. It's not as good storytelling. It just ain't. Not even close. Uh, I don't like the current COD games. Do you know any good smaller scale FPS games that can fill in for them? Also, hi, Rags. Nice Andal video. Hello. Uh, oh, thanks. Glad you liked it. Um, fill in for Call of Duty. Battlefield. Yeah, still around. Medal of Battlefield's Honor. Good. I recommend <laughs> I Battlefield small, 1 and 5. I presume um, that small means not like big AAA sort of a. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean. In which case, I got nothing for you, really. Google um, might be your friend on that one. Look at lists. Yeah, and Wikipedia's. Just some, PC, some PC shooters that might be, uh, might be interested in. There's no small-scale Call of Duty-like games that I play or am really familiar with. I am certain that they are out there. Yeah. But I just don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, Muller, are you going to play the System Shock remake? I think it's right up your alley as a game. I would very much like to. And one of these days, soon enough, I will decide, you know what? Today's the day. It does seem like a really neat game. I've been meaning to play System Shock forever, um, but the originals were always... I never actually tried them, but I was always a little bit spooked by the fact that they were they were of an age, you know? They are a bit old. They are... I will tell if you went back and you played System Shock, it is definitely of an age. It and, um, definitely has a lot of age to it. I've been hearing very good things about the remakes. It's like, ooh, this could be my chance. It is kind of the uh, an interesting thing with a lot of older PC shooters, because it's the same with... um. Something like Deus Ex, it's like, yeah, the, these controls, they're, uh, yeah, the, you gotta, you gotta, like, learn them again. <laughs> you know, it's like, so interesting, because I have a friend you know, who, a friend. Uh, a friend of mine's favorite game of all time, I think, was System Shock 2. And uh, I'm not making any claim about how clunky that game is or isn't. Uh, it's just that 
They they like me with arguably something maybe like Metroid or Resident Evil 4. It doesn't bother me at all, the controls, but there are people in future who'll be like, I can't play this, this is clunky as fuck. And it's like, oh, maybe. I guess the thing <laughs> is that if the promise of a really amazing experience will be enough to get people uh, over that. It's just you know, that when you so um you know a game's quirks and in, in the controls, it like no longer is a problem, but you have to get over that hump sort of thing. Get into yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting thought because the controls really need to feel seamless. Um, you you don't want players to be consciously thinking of yeah. their controls. You want to get to a point where it's just like um, well, there was a time nature. where it wouldn't like you know you have it's your only game for the week or something that you have access to. So you're like, well, I'm figuring out these controls one way or another. Yeah. Greetings from episode fifty. Consider this a donation for what your crew does here. The Moore oh. family sends their regards. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Moore is, family. That's going way back. Yeah. Our first anniversary episode. Ah, oh, and we're ten that's episodes really away great. from the next one. The fifth. Yeah, the fifth boy. One. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, I watched Angel, and man. I'm gonna change this to character and character have the most tragic story I've ever seen. I'm now excited for the Buffyverse coverage ten years from now. Oh yeah. Yeah, character and character, because I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you probably do. I think if you were to guess which two, you'd yeah. probably get it right. I yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but but we can't talk about that with the doggo here. But mm. one day, not only will we Out talk about it, loop. he will too. I've not seen the Buffy stuff, so one day, I'm certain. I am certain. One day. I imagine you're rather curious about it at this point. The little, little things you've I am you've pretty heard. curious, yeah. All the little stuff that's been said. Mm. I don't know anything about it or who anyone is, but... Uh, similar feelings for the end of Succession. I liked the funeral episode with most with its character moments. Brian Cox was right. His exit was too early. Oh, yeah. the um, uh, That's one of the things... Oh, we wanted to have a hot take as well, that um because something that we'd heard prior to watching the show was that that episode was equivalent to Ozymandias. Episode three? Uh, in terms of quality, yeah. Yeah, which is not. Um, <laughs> no. Um, and we didn't feel that way. It was just like, yeah, it's 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 good, I guess. Though I don't know if, I, if I'd feel that way in retrospect. Uh, I'm not yeah, sure. I'm not even sure how I'd feel about it if I rewatched it, but someone in the Discord said, like, I would have thought you'd like it as much as that one episode from Buffy, and I was like, are you... No, uh... <laughs> no, 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 no. No. There are definitely elements of that episode that I think are really strong. Um, Mainly like in the I performances. Said, definitely in the performances, but I mean, it's it's worth... Really, it, it's the writing that was what we're taking yeah. issue with in season four. Everybody else... Because the performances throughout the, the show are, like, consistently strong. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in retrospect, it's like, damn, man, it did close the door on a lot of uh, possibilities for, you know, narrative payoffs. To which the counter argument would be like, well, yeah, but I mean, that's what makes it so powerful. Dude, right? Because it was so unexpected. Um, if, if, like, we were in charge of the show and we were writing season four and we knew that uh, Logan was going to die, I would be like, okay... Which which thing are we going to do? We, we can always do a thing. Are we going to have it so he's recorded several tapes? Are we going to have it so that he appears to Kendall as, like, an influence that is in the room but is not actually there? Like, it's in Kendall's head. He's Flashback. thinking about what his dad would say. Are we going to have, um, like, flashbacks? Or are we going to have, like, a, a history episode? Yeah, like, we are not losing Brian Cox yet. Just because Logan's dead does not mean we're losing. No, I think I want to give one last... I think I would have really liked a flashback episode... Like, um, equivalent to Two Storms, something like that, you know, um, Good like God, a yeah. big, extended sort of, uh, maybe even, yeah, intercutting between past and, and present. Um, yeah, that show really I, had the perfect chance for a, to, to that intro. It's just like, let's see an episode in that world. Well, I guess what people would say is, well, that's the thing. It's just, you're left to speculate on that. That's in the past. That's not, you well, know, I think there's plenty, there would be plenty to speculate on even with an episode. We just see a That'd slice, nice you know? Yeah, exactly, but, yeah. Lord Longbong of Mirchlington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on? It'd be a movie fab for the ages. Yeah, so well, Wags. These scritches for the good boy. Oh, hey, thanks. I find it amusing that that couldn't make it into uh, the Gollum fab, because it would have just been such an absurdly different time that the Long Kong man was probably yeah. asleep. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> But yeah, you know, Long Kong, why not? At some point, I think. When there's less going on, maybe. Yeah, there's less going yeah. on, yeah. 
Did you guys see the Alone in the Dark spotlight? Between that, the fall of House of Usher, and the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, October is shaping me up to be pretty sweet. October is great uh, every year. It always is. There's always crazy shit happening. As I understand it, I believe that Alone in the Dark game is being written by the guy who wrote Soma. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's also got David Harbour in it. Uh, Hopper. He's in that mm -hmm. game. And Fall of the House of Usher is on the way this year, which we will watch the day it's out, more than likely. Yep. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> and the Five Nights at Freddy's movie? Yeah. I mean, memes. <laughs> Why not? It's going to be good memes, I'm sure. You have to watch the that, yeah. Nicolas Cage I'm probably gonna, too. The Nicolas Cage, yeah. Yeah, that's true. We could watch those back-to-back, -back, maybe. Ooh! Party. Did you guys ever record an EFAP TV on Blind Manor? If so, will it ever release, or will there be different coverage? Also, play Little Nightmares. Hi, Rag. We Hello. did record it, as famously I've said before, though, about... With every episode that passes, we're speculating and talking about each one as we finish them, but as soon as we hit, I want to say, like, episode four, maybe five, we stop talking and keep hitting play. We just want yeah. to see more. Yeah. And we're all very it's kind into of it. Uh, an interesting thing with the format is that's that's what happens when you get really grabbed by a story. Yeah, which is why we might have to re-record someday if we want to do some kind of coverage for Bly Manor. Um, mm. But uh, that might be beneficial anyway because of the we know what's going to happen. We can sort of see the construction and outline yeah. it a little bit better. Yeah, uh, a shilling for sins and a shilling for wins. Well, thank you. Star Wars pitch. Han Solo has to go on a journey into pirate space to help locate Luke Skywalker who is lost on an important escort mission between episodes 4 and 5. Hmm. I mean, I mean that's an idea. Sure. You, you can really make up anything you want. I just, um, I'm sure you'll understand when I say, uh, maybe, maybe we leave Star Wars alone. Maybe At we this stop. point, yeah. Maybe we just fucking stop. Yeah. Um, only thing is Luke Skywalker is taking talking with the ghost of Obi-Wan without seeing him and meets a surviving Jedi who is being hunted by Inquisitors. I don't oh. want to do surviving Jedi and Inquisitors. <laughs> no. Or really Obi-Wan. Or really Luke Skywalker. But none of that, the actually. Fucking, um, um, the character, I, would do, I don't want to do any of that. The character Ray Stevenson plays at the new Ahsoka show is apparently a, a Jedi that survived Order 66. Oh! It's just like, for wow, did they manage sake. to fucking kill anybody? That's the memes now. It's like, <laughs> they couldn't have. It's, it's made up. You're gonna have more Jedi than there even were. Maybe there's the more Jedi spawned during uh, Order 66. Bringleton, have you seen YOLO? Recommended. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that like a movie? I guess so. I don't know. Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Hey, Vringy, your work on the Mando series was outstanding. Any chance you could read some Jar Jar lines in your best Jar Jar voice? Have a great day. Ooh, that's, wow. a, that's a pretty uh, good, that's an interesting super chat. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, thanks. I appreciate it. Um... You would have, uh, there's a... That was a there, different there's recording. A, there's a job, uh, yeah, I was, I, wasn't, I was trying to figure out, like, what way to... Yeah, we did that in another catch-up, so... Oh, that's okay, <laughs> though. That, that, but what about this catch-up? This was a different... This is a different super chat. That's true. Let's find another yeah, classic yeah, line from Jar Jar. Yeah, there you go. Look, yeah, you got yeah. it. Let's you, get you a talked classic over it, though. Jar Jar. You talked uh, over Jar -Jar it. Well, I mean, I was, I was talking first, so, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um... Let's see. Hmm. Oh, here, here, here. Let's let's go with this one. This is a classic. This is a classic Jar Jar line. Oh, I remember that one. That's great. Yeah, it's a good one. It's really good one. You really got a sense of the character, I'd say. Absolutely. As if I didn't know Jar Jar before. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Misa day started pretty okay day with a brisky morning machi, then boom! Getting very scared and gr grabbing that Jedi and pow! Misa here. Misa getting very, very scared. You, you happy with that? Yeah, He's and see, like, it's satisfied. great because it really gave a sense to Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon what they were dealing with, the local life, how it was affected by the invasion. And now we have it personified, like Naboo's conflict personified in a in a character. I think yeah, that's it's pretty, brilliant. Pretty brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Especially the Oki Mad. Day instead of OK. Oki Day. <laughs> that's really clever. I just What were they thinking really? You know? 
Well, he's a funnier character <laughs> like... than they had before. That's what George Lucas said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Worked out. Um, any chance you guys... Oh, wait, that's that's what we just did. Uh, Howdy Fellas showed my girlfriend Seven the other day, and she loved it. One of those movies where everything just fits together. Also, hi, Raggles. Hello. Seven What's is in good the box? And... What's in the fucking box? We'd love to see you guys break down RE2 remake and the OG RE2. Define what a remake is versus a reimagining. I always felt RE2 was not remade since mechanics changed and perspective changed. It's kind of fair. Um, it's, it's really about how you define all of that, I suppose. Because if someone, let's say, was to remake Call of Duty 2 and give you Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you'd be like, well, that's just a completely different game. I guess you if they it were to make, that. if they were to remake Call of Duty Two, but with modern gameplay, but like they had really faithful adaptations of like the levels and things like that, I think yeah. that'd be interesting. I'd certainly be. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, when does it become not a remake and just a different game? Like, but you know, I'm not trying to be harsh here because like Resident Evil Four and Resident Evil Four OG are just fucking completely different in terms of how they play. But I know most people would be like, they're not completely different. It's like. <laughs> They're very different. Cinema Sins may be awful, but I discovered Mauler's TLJ Unbridled Rage in the recommended section while watching one of their videos. So at least they were good for something. Thanks for the long. Hey, nice. Well, well. Long time ago. Thank you, Cinema Sins, I suppose. Damn, I'm late. Double speed activate. Also, hi, Rage and Mootle. Hey. Guess you're Rage now. I am Rage. I am Rage. Thoughts on Spider-Verse? The new one, I assume. Hmm. hmm. What are uh, the uh, what what are the official opinions on for EFAP of the Star Wars <laughs> or the Spider-Verse? Star Wars Attack of the New Spider-Verse. Attack of the Spiders. Um I didn't think it was as good as the first one. I'm not a fan of their multiversal I say multiversal mechanics. What I'm strictly referring to isn't even necessarily how the multiverse works because we don't get a lot on that or how it came to be that way more so how every character reacts to it and what they have to say and do about it um i like miles and i'm interested in the journey i know people are upset about the cliffhanger i was are more they? than expecting yeah hugely the shad hates oh. the movie for that cliffhanger um really that's strange i knew I it was a I knew it had a cliffhanger, but I'm movie. really curious if I would have reacted badly at all if I didn't know it had a cliffhanger. Um, I don't know. I, I I would just be like, oh, we're doing a... Because, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, I've seen it's people say... Is, like, incredible. I've seen people say that the equivalent of the cliffhanger in this Spider-Verse is the same as if Infinity War ended when Thanos arrived in Wakanda. Remember that? I uh, I just don't say them as comparable. I'm trying to think of how I would even take that. Like if he arrives I and then you know we have like a, a score rising, rising. All the characters realize he's there. Cap prepares his shields. Everyone's like ready, and then he looks at them, and then we hit credits. Like I'm not. I mean, that, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I, I don't know that that wouldn't that work. Family. Yeah, it's just I don't know. I can I I'm okay with like the story ex spanning multiple films, and then I just I mean, go watch the next. It's a two-hour movie. It was quite, yeah. There was well, lots yeah, of stuff in it. Um, a reasonably long movie, especially for like a three D animated film. Not many of them are over two hours long. And then on top of that, uh, I don't think that is comparable. I don't think that what we saw in Spider Verse is the equivalent of Thanos arriving at Wakanda at the end of the fight, looking to see all the heroes. Right? It's we've settled a little bit, little bit. Right? Uh, we've got how long is it? Like a day before the big thing is going to happen in Spider Verse. We've got like a day of uh, time. Seems like it. Yeah, so, and then he gets in a position, and a reveal happens, and to be honest with you, that's uh, just with how I've seen cliffhangers roll, that's that's a very common way to do a cliffhanger. That seems like a... So yeah, I don't know, that didn't really affect my enjoyment, but um, understanding how everything works kind of did, I, I think I like uh, Miguel O'Hara. What's he from? Is he original for that, or is he from someone else? No, he's, uh, I think he's a variation of Spider-Man. An existing variation. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, and and yeah, of course, the voice acting, the uh, animation, the editing, the soundtrack, it's all stellar. They did an excellent job. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure where I settle on it yet, but those, because I've actually seen it recently. So those are my thoughts as they currently stand. Hmm. Uh, that sounds like something you could do for an April Fool's joke, Mubsley. The This part is boring. Skip when something important comes up. Huh. Oh yeah, that uh, that happened in... Was it Sins' video? He said skip? I yeah, think it, was when, so. it was when people yeah. were talking about something important. Even we were like, whoa. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was pretty early on. He skipped the conversation between uh, Doctor Strange and Christine. Mm-hmm. Why didn't the writers just make Captain Marvel kill the Illuminati and then herself? She has the canonical power to do it. Why not make Scarlet Witch in the weakened form cause an already unlikable character to go haywire? Oh, like with mind control? Um, I don't even, like, if you told me I have to make it so that Scarlet Witch kills all of the Illuminati, I'd be like, oof. You're gonna have to do a lot hey guys, of work. are you sure you want to do this, guys? And just justifying it's going to be real tough. And justifying it and making it in such a way that the audience will find engaging is going to be hard. I see people memeing about the, uh, the... The image is always either Reed Richards getting torn into spaghetti or Black Bolt's head exploding. And there'll just be that picture, and they'll just be like, seriously, this scene was like horrible, or seriously, I can't believe they did this. That sort of thing. Like it's That's, that's the legacy, I guess, for now. Um, hyenas make a sort of mooing sound when happy. Yeah, oh, misconception right. about hyenas. When they're laughing, they are not happy. They are uh, they're just kind of nervous. Yeah, a little, little nervous. Hyenas in general are uh, pretty misunderstood animals. Yeah. Thanks, Lion King. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Lion King's partially to blame for that. I'd say. Um. It's uh, hyenas actually pretty intelligent. They're very social critters. Um. Yeah. A lot of people don't even realize they, lions yeah. aren't even real. They made up for that movie. That's true. Well, well, and they well did the I don't real know about ones. that. I don't know about that, ones, but, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, idea plus two should only be for a combination of both good character points and plot points, suggesting alternatives probably just stay in the realm of plus one. Well, the oh, plus well, two... The feedback. Yeah, the plus two that I was trying to give was that he makes an argument and then searches out maybe an un not really relatively understood counter and counters that two ahead of knowing like i was like that's that's a thoughtful thing to do that feels like more than a plus one above and beyond yeah. sort of uh what's the idea about oh pardon me the idea behind a plus two more like yeah, history particularly pop quiz. if the alternative involves those you know a good character related sort of stuff huh. this is actually kind of funny Mola history pop quiz rags and fringy what is Mola's first law of youtube I have no idea. First I've, law of YouTube. I think I referenced I it a know. couple times after I quote unquote made it, and then I just sort of stopped referencing it. But as far as I remember, it's in the DS2 videos, and I highlight that it's basically you can always rely on a bad video to disprove its own point with the visuals at the time of them making the point. Like I it's, believe that. It's just it's some kind of. It, and we saw that happen in EFAP so many times where someone would be like, this thing is this. And it's like, your visual is literally the opposite. Why are you doing this? Um, I slightly disagree about the Darkhold dreamwalking thing being super convenient. Doesn't it give you a bunch of powers and one happens to be dreamwalking? Um, yeah, but the way that it gives you dreamwalking is so insanely, like we were talking about, it's so insanely specific, it literally only applies to if you have to get America Chavez. Pretty much, well, yeah. remember, It doesn't apply to any other multiverse. Like, people, at, at least as far as the film is established, only she can. So, like, the nature of the ability in and of itself is kind of like, yeah, like, how, how often is that going to be something that you're going to need to use unless you want to steal multiverse powers? Mm -hmm. Just finished Mola's Golem playthrough. Wow, what a terrible game. Looking forward to the Smeagol playthrough next week. Remember, lock balls. Uh, well, you're in luck, because Metal did a Smeagol playthrough, and it's, it's, oh, the game just changes completely. They don't just play the same cutscenes. No, sir. <laughs> change it up it's a right prop good job developers uh, the best example i think is that you get a chance to either strangle or not a lady and then i chose to do it he gives up and then if you choose not to he just doesn't do it and then later on in the game she says she hates you because you strangled her even if you didn't a good game all right 
It's like that a, sounds pretty good. Does that, that remind you fun. of Resident Evil 7 rags? Yes, it does remind me of Resident Evil 7. A lot Ooh, of people. Fuck that game. Wouldn't even know what I'm talking about, but yes, there's a choice you can make in that game that is, uh, they play the same cutscene pretty much no matter what. So, uh, it's kind of annoying, even though it's, uh, build is quite a, or presented as quite, quite a significant thing to do, but yeah, it's fine. No worries. Resident Evil 8 was more finished than Resident Evil 7, so there's that. It was better than, yeah, I'd rather play Resident Evil 8 again than play Resident Evil 7 again. First hour of Resident Evil 7 was alright. Yeah, that's the thing. The first hour of Resident Evil 7 is, uh, it was good. And then, like, the, like, proper combat and everything starts, and it's just, like, super, uh, it's boring, dull, white dot on enemy head, click X times, move to next, it's really just, ugh. I mean, Resident Evil 8 had that problem, but I feel like in 7 it was even more mediocre. Yeah. Uh, just finished... Oh wait, after watching you play Gollum, now I understand. Screw the Elves, Orcs, Gandalf, and Sauron, Slice and Dice, Gollum truly won the argument. Best game, 10 out of 1. 10 out of 1. That is pretty incredible. Not bad. Gollum can live up to that kind of an accolade, though, being a 10 out of 1. Yeah. Maybe the first, the only 10 out of 1 of all time. Uh, I agree. If you are extra quantum mapping the universes by their energy signal, which would probably designate them as diverging from the center point. Meaning that you would consider your own universe one. Yeah, uh, there's no yeah. reason to not consider your own universe number one. Because you'd, you'd want to think that, oh, like even though technically there is no baseline, we're going to call ours the baseline because we're there. It's yeah. us. It's just for sheer simplicity on the matter. I saw H. Bomberguy's video on Deus Ex Revolution. I liked it, but he said Deus Ex Revolution is like a movie game and sucks. Did he not play Last of Us 2? Also, thoughts on Deus Ex games. Sucked? Apparently. <laughs> oh, I definitely disagree with that. And it definitely isn't a movie game. That is very gameplay heavy. That is super gameplay heavy. We actually... Was it the previous stream we talked about Deus Ex, or was it this one? Or recording? It was, uh... It was yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. That's useful. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's things, positive things were said about the franchise, I believe. Um, I'm not familiar with it, though. I haven't seen the video. No, about Deus Ex. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, it's super influential. Okay. <laughs> That's the best we got for now. You guys got to cover across the Spider-Verse? Uh, not Probably until not. the third quote-unquote one is out. So the full story is there. We might give it a coverage then. Maybe, um, maybe. But for now, probably not. Got my finals next week. Wish me luck. Oh, well, good, good luck. luck. You know, Best hopefully you luck. won't even need luck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, EFAP on my birthday, a wonderful gift indeed. Thank you for the last few years of good rat and helping my articulate... Sorry, helping me articulate my words to others as to why these movies are garbage. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Happy to hear, happy to help. Good stuff. Hope you continue to enjoy. Uh, the Gollum EFAP would have been after this, so... I'm sure you would have enjoyed that. Who wouldn't? Only uh, a fool would not enjoy the Gollum EFAP. Rags, one time you said, Offense is taken, not given. I've taken that quote to heart, and it's helped me mature in a lot of situations. I'm not perfect, but I'm better than I once was. Thank you for all that you do, good boy. Oh, you're welcome very much, yeah. It's about, you know, the attitude, how you engage with things. Uh, you know, give yourself a lot of... Give yourself more credit, you know, when it comes to a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Lord Longbong of Muirtrington Abbey, is there any good chance of an EFAP gaming of Bethesda's Dishonored? When there's less going on, it would be an EFAP gaming for the ages. It wouldn't be an EFAP gaming, because I can't play that with anybody, right? It would just be a stream, it's I guess. Single-player game, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I've thought about it, yeah. A lot of people like Dishonored. It could happen. P.S. Hi, Rags. I'm out of Carrick. I think he was going to say out of characters. Oh, my gosh. Clever. Maybe he's out of carrots? Carrots, he has that's no it. Carrots? Uh, Morlem won the argument. I sure mm. did. I made sure Gollum won every argument. Also, good news. Use facts and logic. So Puss the other night, and it was great. Oh, for the first time? Good Apparently, job. Apparently, yeah. Unfortunately, my parents didn't care for it, and my mom even said that she thought it was woke. What the fuck? Fire <laughs> your parents. <laughs> I want to ban that word so hard, shake my head. Um, if it comes off a fucking lost wish, yeah. At that point, it's like, geez, now you're just 
stifling your ability to consume amazing content. Mm hmm Okay, I sort of get it. If you're a demon or something, maybe you lived once upon a time, you die, something takes control of your body, you hate it, new rule. Are they talking about the, the sorcerer rules and stuff, I think? With the undead stuff. I'm not even going to get into all of it again. That, that shit gets confusing after a while. Like, dream walking, dead bodies, living bodies, sorcerers, flim flams. Uh, why hasn't Cinema Wind done beer bad? High rags. Hello. I don't think he does individual episodes of TV, but maybe. maybe we can convince him. Cinema sins on EFAP when? That'll never happen. I don't think he does uh, appearances like that. Oh, sweet crispy critters. Wins is going to flop this. No, he, has, he had a fighting chance. He did well, right? Uh, uh, Between man, sins versus yeah. wins, we all know Gollum wins. True. Uh, hey, Massive. Love this format, but next time y'all should do it with the 5 out of 10 movie like The Suicide Squad or Mummy Returns, where the wins could go either way based on arguments. Also, hi, doggy. Mm. Oh, hi. Yeah, so you that's need the to plan. Find... We're going to vary it up a bit. You need to find Get something that's more. middle of the road, but also you need to find one that they've given kind of equal time to. Because some CinemaSins videos are like four minutes, and Wins will do like sometimes two parters that are both 20. So you gotta, you know, find a balance. But yes, I agree. A lot of Cinema Wins is just, I like this thing. Ding. Often I'm left confused as to why it should be considered a praise for the film. Which is exactly what people said was wrong with Sins. Sins will say, I don't like this, this is bad. Ding. Like, you gotta, you gotta be better, Cinema Wins. Be they better, are confusing lads. They yeah. are confusing lads. Uh, hello there. This is Gruff. What do y'all do when you're running low on motivation to stream? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, mm. Well, I don't stream, but uh, maybe I will. And I can't really answer the question until then. Uh, you can answer maybe it in terms of maybe you you're not there. motivated to stream EFAP. Ooh, I'm, I feel like I'm always motivated to stream EFAP. I really enjoy doing EFAP. It is often the highlight of my... It's often the highlight of my Saturdays. In that case, I'm trying to think of a time where I wasn't as motivated, but then I just did it anyway. Uh, hmm. I'm usually okay to just do it most of the time. Because I kind of... If ever I'm feeling like I'm not in the mood, I usually assure myself that even 10 minutes in, I will be. Like, it'll sort of self-fulfill. And it usually does. I was going to say something similar, because I think it could be applied generally. It seems to me, which is pretty funny when it still causes problems in terms of getting things done, but, like, the easiest way to just get over not being motivated is to, like, start doing the thing that you're not motivated to do. And after a little while, you'll just sort of get into the rhythm of doing it. Um, yeah, kind of make a habit if, out if of you it can in just, a way. If you can just start, like, that usually is the thing that helps. So, like, it, so in the case of, like, not feeling like streaming, you just start and then you'll, you'll get into it. Um, that's not very helpful advice, I'm sure. Just do it. <laughs> like, you know, like it's not, not super helpful advice, but that seems to me, like, really the only thing that, uh, yeah. that helps is, Kind of in the same way that you would imagine, you know, you might not be motivated to go to work, but like that doesn't really, you still go to work, right? You still do it. Um, yeah. Maybe even trying to impose some sort of pressures like that. Not the same kind of pressure of you don't show up to work, you're going to get fired or something. But um, a, a lot of writers talk about it, you know, like people don't feel motivated to go to work all the time, but they still do it. You need to treat the thing that you want to do in the same way that you need to do it even when you don't feel like doing it. Um, and yeah, you know, hopefully that helps. Even though I don't think this, you might, you might think this advice sounds like bullshit. Really, Just hopefully do it. it helps. Uh, yeah. Unlike Cinema Sins, I actually feel disdain for this guy so much so that I want to pay money to let other people know how much I loathe him. Hi, Metal. Wow. Oh, there you go. How about it? Uh, I do not like the toxic. I would. I'm happy to say it's toxic positivity. Um. It just, it just, just doesn't like, help the conversation about storytelling at all. It just well, says, this is as, good now. It's as bad as going into something solely with the goal of being negative. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody would look at somebody who goes into something solely intent on being negative and think... Isn't mm, it interesting, right? Yeah, it's probably going to screw up your uh, ability to do this in a way that's useful. 
I would picture Sorry, a lot of people would argue that um, the thing about positive versus negative is the positive will always have that good chance of inspiring others, while negative is just down in the dumps, sort of blah, 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 blah. It's like you can always flip it. There's always going to be someone who sees hyper-positivity for a movie they think is shit, and then they get discouraged from joining the sort of field they were interested in. So like, well, I mean, I thought that... It would take more work to create something good, but it's just like, you know, anybody can create anything, and that's just the same. There's nothing here to achieve. How many achieve. people have been inspired by, like, oh, I think I can do better than that? Well, yeah, <laughs> you know? and then like... negative criticism, so to speak, you know, analysis. Many people get inspired by those videos. Of course, and, and coverage. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah wow, cool. I, I, I agree with you guys. Yeah, I think yeah, that they yeah. could have done this, 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 this. In fact, that's kind of what I've been doing in my book, and now I kind of want to... I do want to write it so that they, you know, end up here, 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 and to prove that that's something you can do, you know, that sort of thing. I, I <sighs> mean, it, it, the, the encouragement should always be, like, honest criticism, not not deliberately with an objective in mind of, of, of uh, skewing one way or the other. Hmm. It's awesome how mundane these monster fights are that Regina George can get annoyed it's interrupting her wedding. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, that's pretty, pretty dull. Isn't and, it? you know, I don't think much of a person who finds a monster, like, scaling the side of a building with people screaming and stuff boring. I, I don't think much of that person, but uh, Christine would never think that if she's a trauma surgeon. What's not? No way. I'd be thinking about all of the patients she's going to have to save. All the people who are on call. All the disastrous yeah. property damage and human life that's sacrificed. Like, yeah, there's and just the no... suffering that's potentially happening before our eyes, you know? People it's still funny. potentially being, uh, you know, laden with grievous injuries for the rest of their life. If you suggested a tighten-up shot of her face, like, dropping, and maybe even a tear or just something that she looks completely stressed out, I could picture them being like, no, no, this is a fun scene. I'm fun here. There's a fun Which fun would time. be like, no, honor the characters, even characters that you don't know anything about, like her, <laughs> who isn't much of one. Well, like, and that's the thing, right? One, you want to be like, right. what was Christine's profession? And you feel like Michael Walter would be like, uh, she, uh, she was, was a oh, librarian? Well, that's a big word. Well, I don't know. I mean, he didn't watch WandaVision, right? So, like, yeah. He didn't know Wanda's profession either. What is your profession? Oh. The Holy Grail. Uh, the Alfheim War in Dark versus Dark versus Light Conundrum would break Sinowins' brain. He can only fathom things based on does this look like a good guy action? Uh, I mean, Alfheim broke Synthetic Man. He can <laughs> understand the simple message of sometimes you don't know who's right. Yeah, he had to see Ukraine in there, all right? Because what else are you going to do? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, what? what? <laughs> uh, it's just... Uh, uh, which is funny, yeah, because it happened before Ukraine, that, that, the right of Well, that, the development so. of this game was, yeah, before any of that had happened. Development that's for like... the 2018 game was well before the Ukraine stuff. And it was all Man, in the 2018 he's... game. What a... What a strange person he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, au contraire, Olsen's acting in DS2 is awful. Every line is said with all that right. quivering, about to cry baby voice that all women use when oh. they're lying. Nah, you're just wrong. <laughs> uh, she uh, doesn't uh, deliver every line the same way. That's not true. She does a phenomenal job in uh, most of the time she does anything as Wanda, and they don't deserve well, it's, her. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much as easy as that. I'd, I'd say, like, pretty much the majority of the actors in Marvel projects are, like, really capable. But the the actual material is is crap. It lets them down. Yeah, um, especially that ending where she's just like trying to portray a character that's the whole world is falling apart. It's like you're doing a great job, um, you. Even though this character <laughs> is incomprehensible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is this nothing? Is cinema wins? So yes, nothing. I can't remember when he says, "Is this nothing?" Oh wait, wait. When we are saying, "Is this nothing?" I get it. I get it. No matter how terrible Cinema Wins video is, it's still not as god-awful as organized chaos worthless video. Screw that guy. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Um, I assume they're talking about the one he did on my video, which was pretty funny, though. You gotta admit that. Pretty funny. I'm Ray. Ray who? Ray me. Oh ho ho ho. Cinema Wins would've liked that. 
Uh, you're put into the world of Dark Souls 103. Given all the info we the players get, do you relink the Age of Fire or not? Why or why not? So I'm probably the only person who can answer that question, I assume. Well, from the silence, I'm going to say yes. Definitely. Uh, the uh, do I relink the fire or not? Probably not. Um, it just seems to be putting off the inevitable, and it's I'd rather approach and deal with the Age of Dark. See what we can oh, do. Oh, sorry, it. it took me a second to realize. In Dark Souls, the final choice, right? Yeah. Yeah, it seems to me like basically the same thing that relighting the fire, especially with what happens to like Dark Souls Three, right? Of like it, you relight it again, but like it's barely even like a little. Well, and every you know, almost every fucking character in the universe has basically relit it themselves at some point to keep everything going, and it's just like I think we need to accept that something else is about to happen. Exactly, it just seems like delaying the inevitable. Extinct. So yeah, I'd probably yeah say Age of Dark seems like uh, seems like the choice. Extinct animal of the day, the Ornamegalonyx. Ornamegalonyx. Be about this. Oh, what kind of critter is this? I need the loo. Be right back. I like me some extinct animal. Wait, is it extinct? Did they say? Yeah, uh, they said that, right? Yeah, extinct. But. Well, looks like there's some images of it that are quite new, but... I don't know, maybe they're conceptual, or they relate to some other animal, but... Uh, this is apparently the kind of thing we're dealing with. The... Uh, burb. Quite a big burb. Oh! It's like a Velosa owl. Yeah. It's <laughs> really interesting. It's like a Velociraptor owl. Uh, I will say that or is this is this like a meme, or is um, this a real? I mean, is this a meme? You know, th these are the results. <laughs> so, I, 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 my assumption is he's just a big owl that walked around like that. I will say that's kind of funny, but owls with their little legs, I would say, as I, uh, yeah, I like, I like the owls, our owls, our current present day. That's why sort we of normal... killed all the ornamegalonics. Well, that just looks like here. a dude. Oh, that other one. Um... I mean, it looks like a big old owl. Look, mm -hmm. it's like a uh, yeah. It looks like uh, yeah. It looks like a mix between an owl and a f sort of like a yeah. He got his big big feet there, walking around. Probably good for grabbing stuff like mices and snakes and uh, it's meese things of that nature and meese, sneaks. Meese and meese and sneaks. I love me some meese and sneaks. It's very good. Lots of protein. I think sins and wins are the same person without knowing it. Also, watch Patton. Maybe someday. And uh, maybe, maybe. If only they were the same person, that'd be funny. That'd be hilarious. It comes out this whole time. My God. It was God. me all along. Uh, here's more money to express how much I dislike this guy. He sounds like the kind of guy whose flashlight would get fed up and would walk out on him. Oh, they said flashlight, not flashlight. Oh, flashlight. Oh. You don't want that your flashlight sense, walking but... out on you. That's there's yeah, many problems there. Uh, just watched Into the Spider Verse. I highly recommend it. Fair enough. Absolutely. Uh, is this Synthetic Man's second channel? I bloody hope not. I'm not sure what would have prompted that. Cinema wins. wins. Yeah, you'd have thought. Cinema wins and Synthetic Man. I don't see that <laughs> oh, connection at all. I feel I like they're the connection uh, either. they're rather far away from each other. <laughs> yeah, Cinema wins didn't mention the Jews away. a single time. Um, plus 10 points to the EFAP for being a long man. Wow. Uh, it was a long one, that one. It was, it a, was long a long one. A long one. A longy, but a goody. Uh, are you all going to do an... Is it Across the Spider-Verse is the new one, right? Yes, that is the new one. I... Oh, so... They ask you if we're going to do an EFAP for that, so new. No. Well, uh, or if, if we do, it's going to be after Beyond the Spider-Verse. Yes. Because that then can be taken as a, a totally complete story. Mm hmm Check out the movie Buddy Games. Sequel's out now. Buddy Games. I ain't never heard of that. I've never heard of that before. Me either. Can we do negative one for cringe? Yes. <laughs> no. That's a pretty good rule. No, we, did, we didn't do that, though, to be fair. to. Maybe we'll introduce both, it sometime To both later. of them. To both of them, really. Yeah. <laughs> Though I guess if both of them have cringe, then it kind of, like, uh, sort of uh, neutralizes. It levels Cringiest out. Cringiest video loses. 
Also, watch Ted Lasso. Oh, hi, Rags. Hi. I've heard that show's good. As have um, I. But, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think Morbius is better than DS Mom. It is. It probably is, yeah. I doubt it could be worse. DS Mom? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Doctor Strange, Morbius Madness. Madness, yeah. He actually cried at this movie? He has five more rage dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure people did cry with the Wanda stuff, but yeah. again, that's one of those ones where it's like, damn, man. Like, if the storytelling was amazing, that, it, it, like, when the, when, the, when the writing is that bad, it really just forms a wedge between my ability to connect to a performance. Because mm -hmm. um, it's just like, well, yeah, but, like, it, it, it's kind of like the illusion is shattered. I know that this is a bunch of people on a stage, you know, acting <laughs> rather than characters because I can't even believe the characters. I know that it's a terrible script. I love you in every multiverse. I must assume one where she commits genocide is included. Whatever. It's, it's just, it's, it's really love is. stupid, simple perspective on multiverses. Um, yeah. No, it's romantic, uh, and you don't understand because you're, you're oh, reading yeah. into it too hard. It's cute. I mean, you would think that a writer would want their, their story to be read into to some extent, right? Yeah, like, I certainly would to... want my writing to well, be yeah, the implication you know, is maybe that, considered as more than its face value. The implication is that every time that he hooks up with her in whatever universe, it always goes badly because he screws it up. It's just like, ugh. Oh, boring. she can never be the shitty one? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, infinite then. possibilities. Boring. If there's, infinite possibilities, there's an infinite number of Doctor Strangers with different history and different personalities, an infinite number of Christines with different history and different personalities, and an infinite number of events that could lead them to even meet each other. Or form a connection with it. Yeah, it's just yeah. Th that film was not ready to actually meaningfully delve into what the multiverse. Was. Just watch everything over all at once. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just watch that film. Uh, I've just been referred to. I've been referring to Falcon as Captain Black Sparrow. Yeah, that's the nickname Black I suppose. Sparrow. I just I just call him uh, Falcon. He's just Falcon. He's Falcon. He still Falcon. flies. He's Captain America. Yeah. No, he's. Oh, he's and then Falcon, 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 the guy who's going to take over for his Falcon role, we'll just call him Falcon Two. Falcon 2. Falcon 2. <laughs> or we'll just call him F Zero. <laughs> that'll, that'll make it less confusing. Yes. This is my very first super chat. I've been watching EFAP for about four years, and new massives never disappoint. Keep up the kick ass oh. content. Also, high ranks. Hello. Oh, thanks. thanks. Glad very that much. we have such a good track record. Yeah. We're ending Cinema Wins positivity with all those negative ones. He ended up with two points. He yeah. Did. He did. Though I really don't feel like <laughs> he would have, amount of help. yeah, if yeah. I was honest. <laughs> but I was extremely generous amount of help. He was able to do it. I bet Strange is real jealous of Clear's reality slicing knife in the post credit scene. His obsession will return, and he'll be the villain in the next film, Doctor Strange Three: The Knivening. Why not? Fuck it. This is painful to watch. Here's two bucks. Well, thank you. Thanks. Uh, who is this Raimi person, and why is he in all these movies? Well, it's mainly just the M.O.M. one. But he'll be back. He's gonna do Avengers, maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Longman I'll good. there will be some neat visuals, I guess. Also high rags. Hello! Any chance of a Diablo 4 EFAP when it comes out? I ain't playing it, Probably I'm afraid. Not. I'm just not um, really interested in it. I'm kind of interested in playing it, but, I mean... <laughs> As you can tell, there's not going to be an AFAP on it. <laughs> hmm. uh, would love to see y'all do this sort of thing for other of their videos. Lots of great entertainment value here. Stay thoughtful, my guys. Also, hi, Meme Repository. Well, he'd appreciate that. And yeah, the plan is to do it for a, a great film. The idea. See how they both fare. Uh, what's up, YouTube people? And then it says, end part one. Hmm. Interesting. They said that in caps. I don't know what they mean exactly. It could be connected to the fact that uh, that is the last message. Oh! oh. That, that is it for the Cinema Wins and Sins EFAP Super Chats. Thank you all for uh, those very kind donations. We appreciate it. And um, without further ado, I suppose I'll say goodbye and that you can uh, go ahead and catch us on the next EFAP related thing, whatever it might be. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. But we shall say goodbye now. Toodle bib. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. We will see you later.